Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Aaron Maurer, aka Coffee Chug. And so what I'm doing here is I've been a huge fan of Lego forever, like many of you. And I've also been a huge fan of the Microbit. Probably two of my favorite products when it comes to STEM, makerspace, and computer science for just a whole lot of reasons that we're not going to get into. I've been doing lots of workshops and lessons and online courses and online stuff with students and just lots of things with microbits. And one of the go-to activities we've all done is the rock, paper, scissor, duct tape, wristband watch where rock, paper, scissor shoot, and then it shows your symbol on the microbit. And as I continue to explore more with the Lego Spike Prime Kit, I see lots of similarities. Obviously, the 5x5 LED pixel screen. So I thought it'd be pretty fun to... Take one of those ideas, like the rock, paper, scissors that I've used for so long, and convert it to a Lego Spike Prime lesson and activity as more and more schools and classrooms and people are getting these kits. And so this would also work on the Lego Robot Inventor kit too, if you have that addition, very similar to the Spike Prime. And so we're going to take a look at how I built a quick little simple um, wrist contraption for the Brick Hub that allow you to get that built easily in five to 10 minutes with your students and then move into the code, how to code, and then you'll be able to then see it in action. So I hope you enjoy um, as we get rocking in this. And as always, always open to your ideas, your remixes, other thoughts and ideas so that we can all get better. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the actual device that we built and then get into the coding and the fun. So here's the build here. This actually will sit on your wrist as you'll see here in a demo in just a little bit. I've designed to be strong enough that it's not going to fly off your wrist. Obviously, you might have to adjust this if you're dealing with kids that have little tiny wrists. Mine, obviously, is a little bit larger than the average kid, so you can adjust this accordingly. Um, but this is done to be a quick build in all of five to ten minutes, as well as sturdy enough that it's not going to break and fall apart. So here is the step-by-step -step guide on how to build this. <laughs> coding software to create the rock, paper, scissor code that I used for the wrist game, the very quick build um, that's similar to the micro bit, which I love, which we would do and create with duct tape and some Velcro and just put the micro bit right on your wrist and rock, paper, scissor, shoot, and you twist and the accelerometer shows the rock, the paper, or the scissor. We can do the exact same thing with the Lego Spike Prime, and we're just going to use a couple different coding blocks. So let's go ahead and dive into this um, because I really love the endless possibilities. And so this is just one way to do this. There are many ways to create your rock, paper, scissor game. So I'm just gonna try to create one that maybe you haven't thought of before. I'm gonna go ahead and name my project. We're gonna do word blocks. We're gonna go ahead and create the interface here. And it should load up here in just a minute. There we go. And we can see now um, our, our interface for how this is going to look so let's dive into our very beginning here what i want to do is think through and i've already done this ahead of time but when you write code you want to think through what are all the things you want your program to do so i want it to start up i want to indicate when i want my game to start 
I want it to then be activated and give me a signal when it's ready for me to do my rock, paper, scissors so I can see if the the game is actually changing because with three options, you might get rock three times in a row. And so how do you know that it's changing? So we're going to put some color and sound into that. And then I want to be able to reset it, kind of have a countdown. So when you're working with your participants, you kind of shake it at the same time. So it's just a quick little snapshot of the things that I was trying to think through in my process. And so what I want to do here with this is, I want to go ahead and start here. Let's just start with this one here. When the program starts. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to the light blocks here. And I'm going to grab a right command. And all I'm going to put here is left. What this is going to indicate, if it's shorthand, I could may, maybe be more descriptive if I want. That's just going to indicate that I want to press the left button to begin. So when the program starts, we're going to write left. It's going to scroll the words left. And what that is going to do is just get us going into the game. So we need to activate that of what happens when I press the left button. So I'm going to go here to events and I'm just going to put right underneath this one here when the left button is pressed. Now this is where I like to use these my blocks and there's lots of really advanced things with these. We're not going to do anything too advanced with this. I'm just going to use some of these to create my own conditions and little subsets of code. So I'm going to call this one here start game. What's going to happen then in, in my my box here, you can now see I have a block that I can use. And so if I drag that over, when the left button's pressed, it's going to trigger this my block called start game. And you see here that it automatically created this defined start game. Now I can code what I want to have happen when I activate it by pressing the left button. So what I want to do here is just go ahead and get the intro, the beginning of this to, to start. And so I like sound. I like some animation. I want to make sure that we, we know um, that the game's going to begin. So we are going to play a sound here. Um, we're going to let's play sound until done. And we're just going to do a real quiet, not a quiet one, but a really quick one. So it's not too crazy. Um, coin is the one I like. It reminds me of Mario. So I'm going to go ahead and select that here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and jump out of here, but this should give me my coin as an option. There we go. Play coin. I'm going to go back up here to light and I'm going to turn on and then I'm going to code this here to look like the number three. We're going to do a little three, two, one countdown. So I'm just going to change some of these LEDs. There's our three, just like that. All right. But I want to make sure that we actually have like a legit countdown. So I'm going to put a wait block in here under the control. We're going to wait one second. It's going to play the noise. It's going to show three. It's going to do this. It's going to wait one second. And then we're going to repeat this. So what I can do is actually just right click. I'm going to duplicate this two more times because we're going to do the same kind of countdown. And I'm going to go here and it pulls it to a three. Let's go ahead and make it a two here. There's our, our two. And then we're going to go ahead and add our one. So we'll go ahead and do a little something like this maybe. Let's see. There we go. There's our one out of it. There we go. Three, two, one. And then after that, we're going to put in another my block and we're going to create a new one. I'm going to call it shoot. So when I play rock, paper, scissors, we go rock, paper, scissors, shoot, boom. And we would normally do it with our hand gestures here. So I'm just going to call it shoot, nothing violent, nothing crazy here. And it's going to trigger this next set of command. And I like this because I can always advance this code later to do different things. And my code's not just regulated to one linear path. I can start to branch off and really start to create some pretty cool things down the road here. So in shoot, what's going to happen here? We're going to press the left button as we got here and then it's going to start the game and it's going to go three two one and it's going to send us over here and at this point we want to be able to identify that we actually had a symbol start randomly and that's going to be a rock a paper or a scissor so what we want to do here i'm going to just going to quickly turn on so we know that it is transition. And I like to put these little quick transition things in just as I'm testing my code. You can always take them out. I just like to make sure that my code is actually working the way I want. And these kind of give me some built-in checkpoints when I'm beta testing my code. And if I like it, 
in this case, I know that I like this little symbol. I'll keep it. Otherwise, I can always just delete them out. So it's going to bounce over here. It's going to put these four squares in. That lets me know I can keep my wrist steady when I go to play. And now when we go to shake it, it's going to activate either the rock, the paper, or scissors. So we're going to wait one second on that. All right. Then we will begin. And so what we're going to do here is then put a wait until. And we're going to wait. And we're going to drop a sensor block in here. We're going to wait until um, our spike prime brick is shaken. I mean, we got we got a little activation. That, that accelerometer is going to be activated. Our gyro is also it's going to go, ooh, shaken. Here we go. Let's go. Game time. So we're going to put that in there. And then we are going to just put in a set let's see let's see let's um we gotta create a variable that's what we gotta do we gotta make a variable so we're gonna head the variables our nice orange block and i'm just gonna call it hand so this is gonna be our our hand of what it is that's gonna be activated so we're gonna put in here wait until it's shaken and we're gonna set our hand with our operator a random numbers one to three so it's either rock, paper, scissor. Make sense? Okay. Then we're gonna go to control and we're gonna drop in one of these if blocks. So if, okay, we're gonna drag one of these equal operators in there. If our variable hand is equal to one, all right, let's show, let's in this case, let's show uh, paper. So we're gonna turn on the screen and paper we'll just make it really simple let's just light up the whole thing we'll just go right here nice big piece of paper there's our paper all right and just because i like to just see if the code is actually working and triggering i'm going to put this red color light on there just so it stands out here a little bit now what i can do here is i can duplicate this two more times since we know we're going to have paper and scissors so i'm just going to slide this up here just for now all right, and we're just going to change this if the hand equals two. So there's our paper. We're going to go ahead and make this rock. So I think what we can do is just make this a smaller square right in the middle. Just like that. There's our, this is our rock. And we'll change the color here. Let's go ahead and make this uh, green. And our last one is going to be the scissors. And I'm actually just going to use the symbol that was created um, in the micro bit code because it makes the most sense to me. That's what I'm most familiar with. So we'll go ahead and make a pair of scissors here. I think that will, let's see, let's see, did I get it? Uh, almost. There we go. A pair of scissors. That's where you put your, your pointer finger and thumb and chip, chip, snip, snip, right? And let's go ahead and just make this like a blue. All right. So if our hand is one, paper, if our hand is two, rock if our hand is three we got scissor all right now once all that goes through what i want to do here is i'm just going to put a weight block in because if we keep moving our wrist we get excited or shake it could just activate it again and we don't want to do that we want it to stay so that we can compare just in case there's a second or two delay um, for when i activate my my device and you activate your device so we're going to wait five seconds and then all i'm going to do is put one in here to trigger them to I'm going to say right, just so now they know to hit the right button. And if we put, hit the right button, which we don't have activated yet, what we want to do is just kind of reset the game. So I'm actually going to bounce back over here to when this left button is pressed. I'm going to duplicate this, I'm going to drop one right below it. When the right button is pressed, I don't want start game. I'm going to create a new one. And what I'm going to do here is make one um, called play again. Okay, so when the right button's pressed, it's going to trigger this play again sequence. Let me go ahead and shrink this down here a little bit so you can see. There we go. I'm going to drag this down so it's equal. And on this play again, we're going to play a sound just so, again, just, I use these as a little test just to kind of see what we got. Um, and for this one, let's just use I like the bite one. Yeah, let's use that one. It's a pretty obvious one for me to test and see that what we got going on. All right, so let's go ahead and make that bite. And then we're going to turn on our screen. 
All right. And what we're going to do is we're just going to activate this. And I'm just going to put a, a symbol of an X just because it's one we haven't used. So I, I can identify what's going on here. All right. So we're going to turn this on for two seconds. Then let's go ahead and just turn off all the lights completely so it deactivates. And then we're just going to put one more in here to tell them to hit the left button. Okay. So now when it's done, it's going to play the bite noise. It's going to put the X. It'll turn them all off and then it'll say left. And then when you press the left button, it'll activate this again. It'll start the game. It'll do a countdown timer when you're ready, and then you can play. And that way you can keep playing as many people as you want, as many rounds as you want, but you are now in control. So let's go over and take a look at what this code looks like in action. All right, so here's the demo of the code. It's going to tell you to hit left to get started. It's going to do a countdown timer here. Now we get this symbol here, that's when you do three, two, one, or rock, paper, scissors, shoot. So now it's all moved by the shaken symbol. So if I shake my wrist, right there is my symbol for my scissor. It's going to then show, I would then compare that with my, my competitor. It's gonna tell me to hit the right button to reset. And we'll go back to left then to do the countdown timer. There we go. We can play again. All right, there's my rock. So once again, wait in five seconds. We can compare results, and then we can go ahead and start again. So kind of a fun, easy way to take the rock, paper, scissor game, classic game, based on the ideas of what Microbit has done, and now apply it to our Lego Spike Prime kit. All right, so if you've made it this far, you have made it from the start all the way to the finish here. You have grinded with me, so thank you for making that happen. We took a look at the wrist wristwatch, we took a look at how to build it, we took a look then at the code, we took a look at an application, and now you can start to have a lot of fun with your classrooms or your own workshops to get people excited about robotics and coding and back to some, some social engagement, you know, which we can all use. And you could do this, obviously, through the video screen. You can do it face-to-face. -face. There's lots of cool ideas. So that's what I want to hear from you what are your thoughts how would you build the risk contraption differently could you build a better model a more effective model but can we do it in less pieces or more pieces without making it too over the top for people to learn how could you write the code differently i mean there are the, there are a ton of ways to program rock paper scissors so i'd love to hear from you leave a comment let me know your thoughts your questions your concerns other ideas that you'd like to see. I'm going to continue to try to explore some of the things I've done with Microbit and what that looks like in, in the Lego Spike Prime Kit, as well as just some other fun ideas. So got lots of things cooking. But always love to hear from you. So go ahead, reach out, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you're thinking, what you're building. And um, as always, my friends, remember, stay awesome. Peace.